So we have hydrogen or with, with the, uh, the chlorine, so hydrochloric acid that will dissociate into its hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The sodium hydroxide will dissociate into its sodium uh, ions, right, Na+, plus, and the hydroxide ions. Right? So what we've already known up until now was, well, to determine if something was acidic or basic, we looked at the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and we looked at the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So everything that we've done up until now with acids and bases, like back in grade 10, right, we've looked at the Arrhenius theory. That's what we've used, that these acids and bases dissociate into their respective ions, right? Either hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions for bases. Acids dissociate in water as follows. So we've got um, hydrobromic acid will dissociate into what? The hydrogen, right? Hydrogen ion and the bromide ion, right? Um, the uh, sulfuric acid here will dissociate, right? It'll dissociate once. So if we remove one hydrogen, we're still left with uh, HSO4 aqueous, right? But because we've removed the hydrogen, it carries a negative charge. In fact, and we're going to see this um, in the next chapter, what happens is this can actually further dissociate. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid once it dissociates this way. The minute this dissociates this last hydrogen, that version okay, of the ion is actually considered a weak acid. Uh, last one here, uh, the um, chloric acid will disso dissociate, um, actually the perchloric uh, acid, will dissociate hydrogen and the perchlorate. So uh, notice how we're removing the hydrogen. The hydrogen dissociates, right? So all of them contain hydrogen. So all of them are acids, right? Now, these bottom ones in terms of uh, bases, right? And again, they're in water. How do we know they're in water? Aqueous, the AQ. Right? So they're in, they're in water. But notice, what's the one thing that's missing in all these equations? The water, right? Where's the water? We're going to see that in a, in a second. So when lithium hydroxide breaks apart, breaks apart into, right, the lithium, right, AQ, plus the hydroxide. AQ. Potassium hydroxide into the K plus and the OH, right? Again, OH, right? As we've known, bases, OH. The last one, uh, barium hydroxide. This one's a little bit trickier because we've got this subscript 2, one right? It's one barium, right? But what's the charge on barium? It's a pl plus 2, right? It's a plus 2 oh. aqueous, right? It's in group 2 of the periodic table. Right? And the hydroxide, right? We've got hydroxide, right? But how many do we have? Two of them. So we put two in front. So that's just the balancing, right? That's how we balance it, right? So notice how bases dissociate. All bases. Got the hydroxide. All our acids here have the hydrogen ion. And they go as follows. An acid is a substance that dissociates in water to produce one or more hydrogen ions. Right? So that dissociation that we just did, where the H plus was removed, and then we had whatever non-metal, right? The non-metal anion. Right? And bases, similarly, but it wasn't that the, uh, the H was dissociated, it was the OH that became dissociated. So according to his theory and what we've done in terms of uh, acids and bases. The OH meant that we had a base. The hydrogen dissociating meant we had an acid. Problems. Right? So we've got here hydrochloric acid 
dissociating into its uh, H plus ions and the chlorine ions. Okay, and according to Arrhenius, he said, well, this is what's going to happen. We knew that the concentration of these hydrogen ions is what's going to determine pretty much, you know, if something was an acid or a base. But remember how we said, where's the water? If it's dissociating in water, right? Where's the water in this equation, right? So we know that whenever any anything dissociates, it's in the presence of water, right? It's a, it's an aqueous solution. So we should include water into our equation, right? So here's the following: we're going to include the water, right? But notice water really doesn't change, right? It's still the water still remains as water. It's just kind of it, it, it dissociates, but the thing is, is ever look at a at a hydrogen? So let's look at oh my goodness, let's look at hydrogen, right? The H plus, right? So draw a simplified Bohr Rutherford or Bohr diagram of the H plus ion, right? So we've got the nucleus, right? And this is simplified. So this is back. This is elementary. This is grade nine uh, way of drawing atoms, right? So we've got our nucleus, and inside the nucleus, we've got what? Protons and neutrons. What's circling? Electrons. But if it's H plus, do we have any electrons? No, we just have a nucleus. So H plus is nothing more than just one proton, because hydrogen has one proton. The atomic number is one. What's the number of neutrons? Zero. So all H plus is, is a proton. Okay. So that's, that's really where the question is. And what we're going to also see is protons really don't remain in pretty much these type of aqueous solutions as is. Right? So they're, they're really, they're not going to, they're not going to, you know, circle around. So chemists in the early 20th century realized that protons do not exist in isolation in aqueous solutions. So they can't dissociate that way. So where do they go? Right? That's, that's really what we're going to be looking at right now. The hydrogen ion, as we said, just a proton. It is positively charged nuclear particle. No neutrons, no electrons. Just that one proton, that's it. Right? So what happens to that? Well, what happens is it actually jumps on board with the water. So instead, protons are always considered hydrated. They are attached to water molecules. So here we have our one proton here, hydrogen. Here's the molecule water. So it's going to combine itself with the H2O to form this compound called the hydronium ion, H3O positive one. Because why is it positive one? Because we've just added a proton, right? We've just added that extra, and so, that, uh, so all of a sudden now this formula, right, that whole dissociation doesn't really work, right? So now we're gonna not ignore it because we want to do we do want to be able to distinguish between the two methods, and we're gonna see the more appropriate way of uh, of drawing it. So a hydrated proton is called a hydronium ion, H three O plus, and it's an aqueous solution, so it's in water. Now, another problem with the Arrhenius method, dissociate the following base. NH3 ammonia is a base. So if it dissociated, right, for it to be a base, what did we say a base is contained? OH. There's no OH. Right? But somehow, right, with the way it reacts with water, we'll be able to, to create that, and, and we'll see that. So here is the real reaction. We've got ammonia combined with water, right? In the presence of water, aqueous, right? Notice now the subscript here, L, right? Liquid combines. And what happens is the water is going to give up one of the hydrogens, right? And what is the NH4 positive one? The ammonium ion, right? That we've seen back in the polyatomic chapter. And then here's our base, the OH, negative. Right? So it doesn't look that way based on the dissociation method that was brought up by Arrhenius. So it didn't work here with, with some 